video. I hope you're all staying healthy and safe in this crazy world, but we're getting through it and we just have to do the right thing. Anyway, as a reseller, I'm always excited to find new sources for inventory, whether it's a garage sale, an estate sale, a thrift shop. I'm always on the hunt to try to make sure I have enough inventory in my stash. And so I was very excited when my brother and sister-in-law reached out to me and said they're uh, downsizing and going to be selling her mom's house because she's living with them now. And her mother has beautiful things. And uh, would I like to maybe come by, take a look, and see if there's anything I might like for uh, reselling. Obviously, after everyone has been given things that they wanted, her family and friends. So I said, oh, yes, please. So I took a little trip two minutes away from the house yesterday, and it was just nice to see them. I haven't seen them in a long time, really, because of the state of the world. So that was just nice to see them, and we were all wide, you know, six feet apart, masks and all that. And then they uh, started to walk me through some of the things if I wanted, take a look, take what you want. And um, I got some really amazing things. So obviously, um, you know, I'll be giving, oh God, my hair, uh, you know, some, uh, a percentage of my sales to them, obviously for helping me out. And I got some great stuff, which I'm excited to walk you through, and see what it is. Um, I'm also asked a lot, how do I know if something is, quote, good? A few things. Number one, I just kind of learn by doing. Number two, sometimes I just like what I like, and sometimes I get really lucky with that. I'm also a huge research nerd. I have been a research nerd since back in the day. I used to love going to the library, and if you're old like me, microfilm, card catalogs, you know, how us old folks used to get research done. Now, obviously, Google is a great tool. Another tool is a subscription service called WorthPoint, which really helps in identifying things and valuing things based on when they were sold. Um, I belong to a Facebook group, Old Things and Pickers, which is affiliated with my favorite YouTube channel called Crazy Lamp Lady. Um, it's run by a woman, Jocelyn, down in Pennsylvania, and I just kind of stumbled upon her last year when I was really starting this whole reselling journey. And she takes you with her when you she goes shopping at antique markets, flea markets, estate sales. She then has haul videos where she explains things, and her videos are amazing and really entertaining and also very informing, informative. I should say. I've actually learned a lot through her and I have a stash of books that I find, research books that I get um, at a thrift books reseller on eBay or garage sales or library sales and I have like a stash of research books and I just I love the researching part but um, you should check out Crazy Lamp Lady. I'll put a link either up in the info card or in the description. They're just really fun videos and she is um, just very interesting and has a great eye. So, but thanks for taking time out to stop by. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell so you know when I have a new video out and I really appreciate it. So here we go. Let's see the fun haul I got. So here's the first grouping of items that my sister-in-law and brother were very generous to let me take a look through. There's another cup and saucer, but that's in the other room. I forgot to uh, bring it out. I was using it for the research, but it's a Royal Dalton set and it's got the pattern name in beautiful condition. Beautiful, I think it's called Larchmont. So four footed teacups, coffee cups with saucer and a beautiful one serve pot. Again, beautiful condition, and Royal Dalton is extremely collectible. Usually I get a pretty good selling price on these, so I'm excited. I just think they're beautiful. 
so we'll just put them all together and just build up our little stash out of the way the next item is obviously very recognizable as Wedgwood. Now it was kind of in the corner of a bookcase and my sister-in-law was like, yeah, take it, it's Wedgwood. And when I picked it up, it was a very different color. Obviously Wedgwood, you know, the traditional kind of Robin's egg blue, there's green, there's black, but I had never run across this particular color. So, you know, I was discussing it with my sister-in-law and she was like, I don't know if it's even real. Maybe it's not, maybe it's faded. Um, but I took it and those aren't chips. It's, uh, some of the paint from the bookcase bookshelf adhered to it. So that's easy to get off. But when I looked at the mark and I did the research up on the top, you see 1759 to 1984. Well, it turns out that this is a rare color. It's called teal and this is considered Jasper ware with the raised figurines. Sometimes they're mythological, like that looks like Cupid real quickly. So I'm going to look into that a little more carefully, but it's teal Jasper wear, and it was made specifically just for 1984, which was the 225th anniversary of Wedgwood. So when I'm looking at comps and selling information, there's not a ton of these out there, which is always good from a reselling perspective. I'm not sure if it's considered a bud vase, they have things called urns, but this doesn't look like that, but it's in good condition. I've just got to peel off some of that paint, but that's a nice piece and has a nice history to that mark. So that was exciting. Then this gorgeous pot. Now, it looks at first like, holy mackerel, did they like put the handle in the wrong position? You know, obviously the handles are usually like this on the other side of the spout. So I reached out to my Facebook group and I was doing research and this is considered a chocolate pot for hot chocolate. Usually you can tell because the spouts are a little shorter, closer to the pot than if you look at the angle of that spout on the teapot. So that was the first clue. Then this handle, the reason it's in this position is, I'm gonna take this off so I don't drop it. It was used uh, for wait staff. So, you know, excuse me, madam, would you like more chocolate? Well, yes, please. So the waitress, waiter would come around behind them to the right, I think is the appropriate angle. And they would pour it like this. And it's Limoges, which is obviously a very good name. And it was made for Doolin and Martin, Washington, DC. So in my research, Doolin and Martin was a huge importer of Limoges, China, Bavarian, China. It's definitely Limoges made just for them. And the date of this is approximately 1930-ish. And again, her mom obviously just kept things in beautiful condition, but I love how it's unusual. It's got a great name, great condition. So that's pretty exciting, but it is considered a chocolate pot. Obviously you could use it for tea or coffee, but that was its original intent. The next two items. And for me, creamer and sugars, if I only have one, another thing I learned, I used to pick it up because it was pretty, a sugar bowl. Well, honestly, without a creamer, it doesn't no good. They're pretty and you could use it, but having a set, you're much better off. So I just thought these were really pretty lines, not a lot of tarnish. And when I researched the mark, it's Old English, uh, manufacturer is the name, definitely pewter. And these are probably also I'm guessing right now from what I've seen, the 30s, maybe 40s. Even could be earlier, but I'm, that I'm not so sure about. But again, pretty and what people are doing, you know, you see it on Pinterest and all that, another place I go to for 
information I don't necessarily need, but can't stop looking at, is people mix and match China all the time now. People don't necessarily have the China cabinet to hold the 12 piece serving with every piece of a pattern. So if I look even at the coloration of the Royal Dalton, you know, you could mix and match from a color standpoint. So that's another selling feature and it's also a continuing trend in table setups. Then I spied this cat kind of hiding behind a door. It was a little dusty, but I thought, oh, what's that? And my sister-in-law says, I don't know, take it, which I did. So in my research, it's cast iron, but hollow. So it's heavy, but not, you know, obviously if it was solid. There's a mark inside of it that is really hard to read. I can't even find it right now. But in doing the research, there was a company called Hubley that did cast iron dog and cat doorstops. And probably 80% of this particular design matches what they produced, but it's the 20% that I can't definitively say this is a Hubley. So I might, um, you know, I'm not sure how to present it yet, but it's very reminiscent of antique Hubley cast iron doorstop. They did the green eyes, the paint, the detailing, the pose is very reminiscent of that manufacturer, but I'm not 100% sure. And if I'm not 100% sure, I don't say it because I just don't think that's very nice. You know, we all want to make a sale. I prefer to do it honestly. Then this pretty teacup and saucer is from Royal Albert, China, England, obviously. And this is the Nova Scotia Tartan. And I just like how it's got a little bit of the design on the inside. Beautiful. It's almost completely transparent when you hold it up to the light, which is an indication of fine bone China. And it had a mark and very descriptive. This is from probably the 50s to maybe early 60s. Royal Albert did a whole series of different tartans, uh, Scottish ones and Canadian ones. So this one is the Nova Scotia tartan. So for all my Canadian friends and my father's family is actually from Nova Scotia, I thought that was a nice connection. And again, just very pretty and very well made. Then this beauty, glass is one of the harder categories for me because there are thousands of patterns, thousands of styles, many manufacturers doing a lot of similar things. So I was graciously given this piece and this is what I knew to start. It's definitely cut glass because you can feel it. There is a big movement was called Early American Pressed Glass, EAPG. So obviously pressed, you don't have this dimension and it's actually almost sharp on the bottom. So I knew this was cut glass. I also knew that this particular shape with this handle, it's got a little indentation for the thumb, is called a nappy dish. I think it was used for, you know, relishes perhaps or some sort of condiments, but that's what it's called a nappy dish. It has nothing to do with diapers or serviettes, napkins, whatever. So the pattern on it was pretty distinctive. So it took quite a bit of Googling and looking through my research. What I was able to, do, to determine is this is made by a manufacturer called Hawks. And Hawks was the leading producer in a period of glass making called American Brilliance. So you have things like depression glass, you have things like carnival glass, then you have that EAPG. This is considered part of the American Brilliance period of time. 
and I was able to determine, I believe it's called the Tudor pattern. And this beauty is approximately 100 years old. So, you know, it's really heavy. Also, Hawks was known for this serrated edge that you see. And also, if you look between the scallops, it's kind of a V shape. Those are more valuable than later pieces which have a U shape between the scallops. So, I mean, it's just amazing the information in the world. Cut glass, I don't know if you can see it here. Yeah, there you go. It gives off a prism when it's held up to the light. And a beautiful little bell sound when you ding it. So this is a beautiful piece. And I believe she had more that I didn't take. So, you know, we'll see if I'm still in their good graces, maybe I can get more. Then the final item of this grouping is this amazing pewter tea or coffee pot. Let me just move those bad boys out a little bit. It's not tarnished. There's no scratches. It's got really pretty little embellishments on the, t on the lid, on the handle. You know, there is some patina, but when I tell you how old it is, you'll see why it might be, have some patina. You know, just very detailed looking. Wor you know, obviously it works. The inside, very clean. Again, a little tarnish here. So on the bottom, it is marked HB Ward and Company. So when I started to research and I was able to match the pattern, I found the manufacturer. This beautiful piece of American history is from 1850. And I just, I find it amazing to put my hands onto something that was made and used over a hundred years ago, like 150 years ago, if my math is bad, but it's old. And, you know, I just imagine who, you know, her mom had it. Was it her mother's? Was it her grandmother's? How did they get it? Did they use it? And I just love the history of items. So this to me is a beautiful piece of history. So stay tuned because I got some more goodies. Let me make some space. I'll be right back. So these next items, I've mentioned it before, I do really well with Wilton cake pans. I don't own any Wilton cake pans because I was the mom who would buy a cake at Entenmann's, the supermarket, God forgive me, and put it on a really nice cake plate and happy birthday. My sister-in-law, however, has always been and still is a great baker and would always do themed, really beautifully decorated cakes for her son's birthdays. And my son would sit there and go, oh, that's a cool cake. I was like, what's wrong with the, you know, devil's food and marshmallow icing Entenmann's cake that mommy got for you? So it's not my thing. Never has been, never will be, but Wilton does well for me. So she graciously gave me a whole bunch of can, uh, cake pans. So I'm just going to show you real fast. I think only one doesn't have the paper insert and they're all Wilton. They're all dated on the back. And you know, some of them go back to, you know, the nineties when our kids were little. So we have Winnie the Pooh. It's going to make some noise as I put them down. Harry Potter. And they're all in really good condition. I mean, they've been used, but not abused. Then we have Elmo. And again, the paper inserts help to sell it a lot. Then we have a cross, which is beautiful for you know, communions or confirmations type of get togethers when we, sorry, when we can all get together again, that is soon. Then Blue's Clues, which was my son's favorite cartoon growing up. I also thought it was really cute too. And I don't know if Blue's Clues, I mean, my kid's 26, so I haven't kept up on these things. I don't know if Blue's Clues is a thing. Is it still around? But I love that one. 
Then this one is a pretty cuddly lamb pan, which again is a great uh, pan for maybe Easter, birthdays, baby showers, things like that. And then finally a Megasaurus cake pan, which is just so cool. So I just really appreciate her generosity in handing these over and hopefully we'll do well, but you know, I'm running out of room, honestly. I have a small house, if you know where I live, it's tiny, and I'm like a squirrel. I have boxes, bags, squirreled away in every nook and cranny, and I had a majority of my stuff in our attic, which we can only access by a pull-down stair. Last week, I went up to get an order to fill it, pull down the ladder, the whole darn thing came down in my hands. That was no fun. Anyway, we got a crew in from Lowe's. They were great. I put it out on Facebook. It was, they spoke in Italian, nothing but Italian. Obviously they spoke English to me, but to each other, they spoke in Italian. And I found it very soothing yesterday, just listening to them speak to each other while they installed these new stairs. And they're obviously better than what we had. We had those stairs for 30 years. And I felt like Diane Lane in Under the Tuscan Sun. So that was my little story from yesterday. Anyway, that's it. I hope you like this stuff. And I think there are some of these items that are going to do really, really well. And hopefully then, too, I can give a nice percentage to my brother and sister-in-law, which doesn't hurt. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me. Enjoy this hot summer, wherever you may be. But stay safe, stay healthy, wear your mask, wash your hands, and let's all get back to things. And the sooner we all cooperate, the sooner that'll happen. Peace out. Rant over. Have a great one.